Hi, uh, I'm Mariam. I'm a senior research uh, scientist from the PNICU genomics team. I'm here today to talk to you about how the immune system works to protect us from infection. Uh, we live in a world that is heavily populated by both pathogen and non-pathogen microbes, as well as the vast variety of the toxic and allergen substances that all could be in some stage threat to our normal body function. Stuff can happen, uh, you nick your skin uh, and bacteria can get in or you rub your eyes not realizing that the doorknob you have already touched has a virus on it or you eat something that maybe wasn't cooked or cleaned as uh, well as you should have, it should have been. So, and just easy like that, you can get an unwanted guest in your body. And this is the time that uh, your immune system can step in like a bouncer. It releases white blood cells and other chemicals or can make a reaction to destroy all of these threats uh, for your body. So the topics that I'm going to cover today for you, it's uh, including the immune system and immune response, the general networking of the immune system. And I'm going to talk to you regards to what is sepsis and what will be the immune role in uh, fighting with the sepsis. And I'm going to talk very briefly on the multiomic approaches in immunology, but this uh, uh, multiomic, it's a separate topic itself that I'm going to uh, give it, talk about it in more details in a separate talk. So as a matter of the history, the uh, immunology, the word immunity derives from the Latin uh, word, which is immunis, and it means exemption. No one really knows when a, a human first noticed that they are better at fighting the disease the setting, second time they get it, but there are evidence and documents uh, mentioned in Chinese and Greeks that uh, it, the fact, uh, the, the history of the infection goes back to the fifth century BC. Okay, so the key determinant of the outcome for the infection is the balance between the host response and the microbe evasion in, in the body. There are uh, two distinct host strategy that uh, the body can deal with an infection. Elimination of the pathogen, which is happening in the resistant host, and uh, we have got uh, the tolerant host, which is uh, one of the way that the body can uh, get rid of the infection by reducing the uh, negative impact of the infection in the body. And a host, the third uh, strategy is when the host becomes susceptible, if they are unable to reduce the pathogen load or they are unable to tolerate the negative consequence of the immune response to the infection. Okay, so in general, the immune system has got two arms. The first arm is the innate immunity, which is the immediate response to the white array of the substances. It includes the skin and mucosal membrane and barriers like the, uh, as I mentioned, the skin, as well as the non-specific internal defenses, which is including different immune cell subsets, chemicals like interferon and complements, as well as physiological responses like inflammation and fever. The second arm of the immune system is the adaptive uh, immunity, which is delayed response to the specific pathogen and it has got two uh, parts. It's the cell-mediate immu uh, immunity, which is uh, controlled by the T cells, as well as humoral immunity, which is controlled with B lymphocyte cells. And at the end, the B cells can uh, synthesize and release the um, antibody against the pathogen. So as I mentioned, the immune system has got two different arms. The first one is the in innate immune response, which we usually born with this. It's a non-specific distinguish between uh, the human cells and pathogen, but it's not specifically distinguished between different type of, types of the pathogen. It's, it's really fast and there is no memory involved in the innate immune response. The second arm, as I mentioned, it's the adaptive immune response. And we develop this when our body is exposed to the uh, microbe or chemicals released uh, by these microbes. It's highly specific, distinguished between different pathogen. It can take weeks to kick in, but uh, uh, the cells can remember the same antigen when the next time they are going to face with it. But how the immune system really fights? The main uh, part of the immune system is the immune cells. 
So in an innate immune response, we have got activated of the antigen presenting cells to produce uh, type 1 interferon, as well as activation of the NK cells, and also the phagocytosis, which is usually happening uh, by mm, the mature activated neutrophils to kill the cell, to kill the pathogen. In the adaptive immune response, if the innate immune response is not good enough to get rid of the pathogen, so the adaptive immune response is going to be activated. It's mainly uh, including the lymphocytes, uh, lymphoid cells, which is B cells and T cells, to produce a specific antibody, as well as the memory cells for the future protection. And this is what exactly the what vaccine is doing in our body, which is uh, going to be a separate talk itself. About sepsis, I think as a scientist, I'm not in a position to talk to the audience of this talk about the clinical point of it. But in few words, I can just uh, uh, say that sepsis is a host immune disorder starting by infection followed by the immune dysfunction. And it's a life-threatening medical emergency that can lead to the multiple organ dysfunction syndrome. Also, it has got a long history dating back to the over 2,700 years ago when it was first mentioned uh, in the Greek poems. And uh, at that time, it was thought that sepsis uh, is uh, internal rotting or decaying. And it was because of the smell of the affected subjects. Okay, since then, the definition has been a little bit changed because of the development of the medical hygiene. Uh, and uh, in late 1800s, it, the concept of the sep sepsis was modified from internal decay to originated from a harmful uh, microorganism. In general, sepsis can happen to anyone at any time from any type of infection, and it can affect any part of your body. It is a medical emergency that can be fatal if it's not diagnosed and treated quickly. So when the infection is happening in our body, it's cells and the different parts of the cells involved in uh, fighting with the infection. Uh, as I mentioned, the first arm will be the innate immune uh, response. And the cells responsible for this part of the immunity they usually sense the pathogen by recognition, pathogen-associated molecular patterns. And these are uh, working through uh, finding the cell surface or intracellular pattern recognition receptors, which this examples could be t uh, TLRs, nucleotide binding oligomerization domain-like uh, receptors, retinoic acid-inducible gene-like receptors, and C-type lectin receptors. Rather than the immune cell subsets, there are other different parts of the immune system that can help us to fight with the infection. This includes release of the cytokines and chemokines, recruitment of the phagocytosis, which as I mentioned, it's partly uh, through the neutrophils, as well as local activation of the complement and coagulation systems. So in summary, for the body to return back to the homostasis, everything is mediated by the compensatory mechanism, which aims to prevent collateral tissue and cell damage. OK, so during some of the infection, the pathogen predominates and uh, succeed in multiplying despite an activated immune response, which did, then it becomes unbalanced and harmful to the host. This is most likely what's happening uh, in a sepsis in your body. So sepsis can affect the function of all type of immune cell subsets. It can happen in two concurrent uh, phases. The first phase, which is the hyperinflammatory phase or immune activation phase, it's known as a cytokine storm. And uh, it's an initial excessive inflammatory response specific to the pathogen factors. And it should play a a defensive role which can cause the cell and tissue injury or even uh, multiple organ dysfunction syndrome. The second phase is a hypoinflammatory phase, which is an immunosuppressive phase, uh, which the immune system is going to be paralyzed, or we call it uh, immunosuppression, which at the end it's going to lead to the immune cell and, uh, and tissue death. Okay, so in summary, how the body is, uh, f uh, how your body is functioning to 
fight with the sepsis. The first part is the excessive inflammation, which is mediated by release of the pro-inflammatory mediators by multiple cell subsets, as well as activation of the coagulation and complement system and vascular endothelium. This part is characterized by cellular injury, which can result in a release of damage uh, associated molecular patterns and uh, also organ damage and cell damage and dysfunction of uh, some tissues. The second uh, phase, as I mentioned, it's the immune suppression, which is characterized by apoptosis of the different cell subsets, which is T cells, B cells, and dendritic cells, as well as we can see some exhaustion of the T cells. Uh, plus expansion of the T-Rex cells and myeloid-derived de suppressor cells population. Also, we can see reprogramming of the antigen-presenting cells, which can lead to the uh, lower expression of the HLA-DR and a diminished capacity, capacity of producing the pro-inflammatory cytokines. Okay. So my, uh, my next couple of slides, I'm just going to uh, integrate uh, the new omic technology in the immunology. As we all know, for the last 10 or 15 years, there have been lots of publication saying that transcript uh, signature can play important role in improving better understanding the immune system. And this is what we think that it might help clinicians to make more informed decision when they are facing with subjects that's coming to the hospital with severe infection. So a study of the immune system regulation and response to the pathogen using the omic technology can help to better understanding how the immune system function, how the immune system regulated and how it can improve infection diagnosis and the outcome. Also, immune cells, as we know, uh, they go back to the blood stream. And because the transcripts are located inside these activated immune cells, uh, it looks like they can be measured and accurately discriminate between non-infectious cells, sepsis, and determine type of the infection, and even predict the severity of the infection. We all know that sepsis diagnosis is very challenging. What I'm going to show here, it's just a summary of the, uh, a small part of the article published back in 2015 in New England Journal of Medicine. The study was done on 2,259 2, uh, radiographically confirmed pneumonia. They did some uh, uh, blood tests, the routine blood tests to see if they can detect the pathogen. But uh, as I mentioned, sepsis diagnosis is very challenging. So from those number of the confirmed pneumonia, there were no pathogen detected in 62% of the subjects. So even though we know that the pathogen is there, but it's most of the time, it's very difficult to find it. So we have, uh, we should remember that the sepsis is not like bacteremia. And it means that most of the infection are not in our blood stream. So it's not a blood stream type of infection. So this is what is really missed by a standard care in the hospitals. So in this slide, I'm just putting uh, sepsis in two different axes. The Y axis showing the infection type and the x-axis is showing the severity or mortality or, or in a simple way how sick the patient is. So based on these two axes, we have got four different scenarios. The simple scenario is when the patient has got no infection detected and the patient is not really sick. So in this case, usually the subjects can be sent home. The worst scenario is on the top, uh, which is the uh, we can detect the pathogen with using the current uh, diagnosis and prognosis uh, blood test, as well as we can see the patient is really sick. So this is when we say uh, the subject might have the sepsis, and uh, these subjects are usually end up in ICU and uh, with broad spectrum antibiotics as a treatment. The third scenario is when we can detect the pathogen in the blood, 
but there is no severity. So patient is not really sick, doesn't look like really sick. So this is when uh, more likely the subject could be discharged, go back home with a simple type of the antibiotics. And the last scenario will be the time that there is no pathogen can be detected in the blood, but this, the subject is really sick. So in this case, the subjects usually keep in the uh, hospital, possibly in the ICU for further, further diagnosis. So using these two axes of uh, sepsis, I just wanted to mention that there is no definite diagnostic test currently for sepsis. The current approach for diagnosis sepsis is the test that is usually done uh, on the blood samples taken from the subjects, including uh, measurement of the pro procalcitonin, C-reactive protein, uh, white blood cells count, microbiology test, blood culture, and PCR. And, is, uh, and for the prognosis, uh, the current approaches are measuring the lactate, calculating the QSOFA, CERS, and CRB65. So just, I'm just repeating this. There is no definite diagnostic test for sepsis using the current approaches. So this is where the biomarker signatures comes into the story, and we think we, it, this can help the uh, clinicians to make a better decision for the uh, subjects who are ending up in the hospital. So with the biomarker signatures, they can tell us how the, your body is doing during the infection, and they are mostly very easy to be measured in the blood. So bring all together, the immune system defends uh, the body from infection. It's made up of a complex network of the cells, chemicals, tissues, and organs, and they are all have the same goal, which is uh, fighting with the infection. Sepsis is defined as a life-threatening organ dysfunction, which can be caused by a dysregulated host immune response to the infection, and sometimes it has been called as a, light, a silent killer. With current available diagnostic tests, it is hard to determine infection as well as predicting the severity and outcome of the patients. Multiomics data can play an important role in the clinical practice by predicting the disease susceptibility, predict disease severity, and predict treatment response. And host immune response based tests, which is the omic technology, are being developed in response to the unmet need for the accurate diagnosis and prognosis of infection, including sepsis, to help clinicians make more informed decisions as a matter of prescribing antimicrobial or antibiotics, as well as ordering additional diagnostic tests and assigning level of the care. So I assume uh, one message taken home from this uh, presentation is when assessing the infection or sepsis in emergency department or ICU, just think more about the patient and not focus only on the pathogen. Thank you, I appreciate the opportunity to speak today.